welcome back. It's True again with another Cafe Yocta episode featuring a Bicore AM64 X System on module. Today, we're going to be building the BSP, which stands for Board Support Package. That's going to include your bootloader, Linux kernel, user space utilities, your application, all, you know, in a root file system. Basically, everything you need to boot your development kit into Linux. And so, we're going to be diving into that together. Um, so a lot of the information that we're going to cover in this video today is really going to be out of this build the BSP guide here in the developer wiki for the Ficore M64 X system on module. Um, yeah, so check out this guide for a little more information. We're going to be walking through this um, step by step together. So kind of maybe refer to the video for anecdotal, anecdotal, antidotal, ugh, anecdotal information. And uh, check out the guide for the commands themselves. We actually recommend copying these copy and pasting these copy pasta right out of the guide. So definitely going to want to have this up while you work through this process. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the BSP. The, build, the BSP is built with um, what's called the Yocto project. That's kind of the de facto standard these days for compiling your production ready Linux software images. What do I mean by that? Well, um, imagine booting up a development kit, maybe a, a single board hobbyist board, maybe like the Raspberry Pi. Uh, in order to run any kind of custom application, you're going to typically going to have to fulfill some hosts or uh, fulfill some dependencies, right? You're going to have to sudo apt get install some things in order to get your application up and running. Now, that would not be accessible in you know a lot of industrial production settings. Um, you may not have internet access as soon as you boot up the device, so it's advantageous to be able to bake all the dependencies into your software image right at the beginning and then flash that during manufacturing and just be ready to go with everything already installed. And so that's what the Yocto project does best. It's for making very reproducible and maintainable production software images that kind of include everything you need in them um, from the get-go. Uh, and then you can also you know, facilitate software updates and you could be your own package feed maintainer which we'll, we'll make a video on here in the future probably. Um, okay, so let's dive into it. In order to build with the Octo project and build the board support package that Phytech provides by default, the uh, essentially, by the way, that's going to essentially allow you to recreate the SD card that comes with your development kit by D, uh, right out of the box. So, um, in order to reproduce that, you follow this process, and then you're free to modify it as, as from there. Um, so, to get into this, we're going to need a Ubuntu 18.04 build environment. Um, with root permission, the uh, a good way to get get a hold of that here, and like let's say you're working with a Windows 10 machine uh, that your company gives you, that's like my situation. I have a Windows 10 laptop here. I spin up virtual uh, virtual machine software. I prefer VMware Workstation. This is my preferred, but um, there's a number of other options. VirtualBox. Um, these might be the same product, but. Uh, Anyway, you have a number of options there to host uh, your virtual machine in parallel with your native uh, host machine. Um, I like that setup because there's some things I do in Windows, some things I like to do in Linux. You could natively boot Linux. The important thing, ultimately, it doesn't really cover this as a requirement here, but it's nice that once you build your binaries, you can flash those directly to a removable boot media, such as an SD card. and so. And in order to do that, you would need SD card access, typically through like a USB SD card reader. Um, options for getting a Ubuntu 18.04 host machine that, like, such as WSL2, uh, EC2 with AWS services, or um, utilizing like uh, some kind of server in your that your IT department has given you access to, and maybe your your uh, office. Um, those are all good options. However, there is an issue with accessing the SD card reader directly. Um, and so I'll actually walk, show you a little bit of how I tackle that problem. But anyway, these are good, all good options. I'm going to do a combination of those things I talked about. I'm going to use a server that the IT department has set up for me, but I'm also going to rely on a local VM. Um, and I have both set up. The uh, build itself is going to require grabbing a bunch of sources from uh, uh, on the internet, these are all mostly uh, open source components. Um, you know, Linux. The Octo project itself, itself is also open source. The um, all the sources that are going to essentially get compiled and stuck in your root file system, they're going to take up around 200 or so uh, gigabytes of free space on your machine. So we recommend a little bit more than that, around 250 gigabytes, um, just just to get through the build without having to like 
get it stopped due to you know low memory and having to increase it and then going again. Uh, start with 250. We recommend that. And then the build resources when it comes to like your ability to compute, uh, eight gigabytes of RAM, four processing cores. That is an absolute minimum. Like it is kind of painful actually to operate with those constrained resources at this at this level, but you can get away with it. Um, really, you want to have a lot more. And I'll show you my setup um, right now, actually. So this is my local VM. You'll notice that I'm actually running uh, Ubuntu 20, where is it? Oh, it's not in here. I believe this is Ubuntu 22 or 22.04 based on this kernel version. But um, th that's not so important. I just use this VM to access SD cards via my SD card reader. And I do a couple other things in here. But what I like to do is from here, I SSH into a server that my IT department has set up for me. And we can take a look at this. This is an 18.04 host environment right here. So this is where I do the, the majority of my work uh, when it comes to the Alpha 2 BSP for the Ficor M64X. And so you might want to emulate something similar. Um, if you take a look at my compute resources, I have like 56 cores available here. I have like significantly less on my virtual machine because I'm sharing those with the Windows native host environment. Um, so this server here is really dedicated for building 56 cores on it. And then um, let's see how much memory I have. So memory, what is this like 60 something, 60 gigabytes? I think that's about it. So yeah, you want lots of resources. As many as you can get really helps uh, make iterating with the Octo project a lot faster. Thankfully, it's very intelligent. It'll like take a long time to build everything the first time, but afterwards, if you modify little things, if you modify the, the kernel, uh, the Octo project can intelligently identify what you've changed and just reuse cached previously built components so that um, subsequent builds are a lot faster typically if you, as long as you're making small adjustments um, at a time. The, um, yeah, so it's, it's, a, it's pretty cumbersome the first time and then iterating after that's a little faster, but just having as many resources available as possible is helpful. So let's dive into building the BSP. Now that I'm in my Ubuntu 18.04 environment, we're gonna have to update the package feed real quick. And then we're also gonna need to grab all these uh, dependencies here to actually start building with the Octo project. The Octo project itself is an open source collaboration project that contains a lot of components. Um, really, it's the open embedded build system that actually does the building. Uh, okay, so we got the dependencies out of the way, Going, just continuing line by line down this uh, document here. This step trips up a lot of my customers I work with. A lot of developers just seem to f miss or forget or think that this is not so important. Um, Ubuntu ships with the preferred shell as being dash. I and mean, we do not want dash for the Octo project, we want bash with a B. So we can actually set that really easily um, with this command. And you can see that I can just select yes or no. Uh, select no. That will set bash as the preferred shell. And you'll get a little more output. I've done this before here, so, so it seems kind of like a silent output. Now, we're going to have to compile Linux to run on a Cortex-A53, which is ARM Cortex 64-bit. We're going to need a couple tool chains to do that, right? We're going to need a 64-bit uh, ARM compiler. We're going to get that here. And then we're also going to want to be able to compile some things to run on the Cortex-M for the R5s. Um, so we are going to also need this guy. And so essentially, remember, we're just going to run through everything line by line together. A few moments later. And now that these are unpacked, we can go ahead and remove the tar balls. You can do this do that very easily like that, or you can just use the command here from the guy directly. Um, so we're in order to tie this tool chain directory that we just created to the build, we're gonna actually need the absolute path there. So navigate in there real quick and then do this PWD command. It'll give you the, the absolute path to the current working directory. Grab that, navigate back, and now we are ready to go ahead. Oh, we don't have to save that to the clipboard now. You just have it accessible to copy there. So um, now we're gonna have to do a couple things and configure our local Git configuration. Um, so I typically go by the alias tloan for true. And if I go to uh, the Git 
here we go. We need this guy too. I need to set my name. And let's do this guy too. Forget what this does exactly. I think it gets you the latest uh, certificates from the certificate authority. I have to go read a little bit more about that, I think. Tell me what's up in the comments below. And another thing, this, so this is recently added to these guides here. Um, there was a recent change to GitHub. The Git protocol got EOL'd, which means end of life. They don't support that Git protocol anymore. So I like running this command um, before kicking off a of BSP. Uh, there are some components here from the reference Yocto distribution from Yocto. There's recipes that will utilize the Git protocol. It's basically a repository with this pre, uh, prefix. Um, we want to use HTTPS for all of those instead of Git, right? So that's that's this is how we can easily do that um, in one line and modify our Git config to do that. So just copy that. Remember, we're running everything line by line. Now we're just gonna make a directory to house the BSP and we're gonna navigate in there. And so from here, what do we do? We need the Phi Linux script. So Phi Tech has made it pretty easy. So everything above this, right, is uh, kind of not Phi Tech specific. It's more you know, general host setup, kind of cross compilation setup with the tool chain. Um, now we're actually gonna get into Phi Tech specific things. So this, the uh, the Phi Linux script, it's hosted out of this download.phytech.de website. Grab that from the internet. And now this is ultimately a wrapper script for the repo tool, which comes from Google. Uh, the repo tool is uh, capable of like kind of reading over or parsing an entire manifest file and cloning like a ton of repositories all in one go. Whereas like git clone, you typically will grab one repository repo we can we can automate that process for a bunch of them. And so that's that's the Octo project is gonna rely on a number of these open source components. So that explains why. Uh, let's give that executable permissions, run it, and then with the init initialize uh, argument here. Now, again here, repo tool mentions a little bit about what's going on. Um, so getting into the interactive prompt of this, notice that Phytech has a number of system on chips supported uh, on our products. Here, you're just gonna target your product that you have in front of you. Today, we're working with the Phycore AM64X, so we need the AM64 system on chip. So option three at the time of recording, that could change depending on where we bubble the latest processor platform. Uh, select three. Right now at the time of recording, we got two BSPs. Alpha one is EOL. We do not support old alpha software. We Phytech only supports the latest software and unless it's alpha, alpha just needs prototype. It's because this is early access hardware. Uh, eventually this will reflect like a, a version number that's based on the year of release, minor and then major, or major and minor release numbers and then the year. Um, right now the latest is two, so just go ahead and select two. And with every release, so it's gonna go ahead and clone a bunch of stuff, but every release too, we're, uh, we're gonna have a certain number of hardware configurations supported there. So the third and final uh, interactive prompt in the Phi Linux script is gonna be what, essentially what SOM configuration you're working with. Um, usually Phi Tech will make a, a standard off the shelf SOM configuration with a, a select amount of RAM, two gigabytes here in this case, um, and then maybe other, modifiable features on the system on module. Uh, an example would be like not ordering the SOM with the onboard ethernet phi included. That would just kind of cut your your bill of materials down um, when, you, when you buy the system on module. Uh, for example, you may not need ethernet in your application, so why pay for that part? That's a good, good point. Um, because this is an alpha product, we only have the one machine config. So don't be alarmed if you only see one, that's that's okay at this time. We will typically expand that out as we go. So select that guy, and we're actually gonna take the tip right from here. Okay, and so we can go ahead and run that, and we can kick off our build here, but not so fast. Let's take a look at the local build configuration. So notice that as soon as I source the build environment, we got stuck in this build directory. We can um, go a little further and look in comp slash local comp, this file configures the local build. So we can set what machine we're building for. We remember, we set this in the interactive file Linux script. The distro Arago, that's a, a Texas Instruments distribution of Linux. Um, Phytech has essentially just taken that and ported it in our hardware. 
uh, custom stuff for our hardware, but because the system on chip is the same, a lot of stuff is drawn from their reference distribution. A um, number of other things here. Uh, let's keep going down, down, down. So there's interesting things that we can set here. For example, like let's say you want to have more free disk space um, in your fo root file system. You could de-uncomment this line here and then specify in uh, maybe bytes, mi bytes. That's what I think that's how you pronounce it, maybe bytes. Um, you could specify how much more that you want um, at the end of the disk, uh, for example. A bunch of other things you could change. Really, the um, this this guy is really only specific to uh, NXP processors. This is a Texas Instrument processor, so we can leave that commented. Here is where we want to set that um, toolchain directory. So if you remember, we can just navigate back there now. Um, grab this, copy it to the clipboard, and then we can just like navigate back to the build directory with this um, really great environment variable. It's exported automatically when you source that build environment too. And then copy that in here. Now, our build configuration is set. We can go ahead and build the BSP. Oh. More moments later. There we go. So we can see that running. It's crazy because I have like 56 cores that can run a ton of tasks in parallel. So. Uh, yeah, that's why it looks like this. If you have like a much more constrained machine, you're only going to be able to run like four or five or six of these top processes at a time. If you notice here too, the TISDK default image, which is the default fully featured image, it's going to take about seven and a half thousand processes. You can see that here, uh, the number out of. So yeah, keep that in mind. This is going to take a long time to build as is, even with my pretty uh, sweet build system that I got going. Uh, you may want to scale this up or down, probably up, <laughs> uh, just to make your life a little easier. I'm go ahead and kill this. Now, I'm going to switch build environments. In order to do that, I'm gonna completely close my shell and reestablish it. That way I uh, don't have to overwrite my environment variables. Let's go to AM64 Alpha 2 BSB. I see my path here. I do things a little differently from the guide. Our initial setup this way, this is directly from the guide, and I would expect customers to normally just follow this. Um, I organize things a little differently. Uh, don't pay any attention there. Let's source the build environment again. And then from here, we can take a look in the deploy directory, and we can see all of those uh, components that are built into the SD card image, they're independently deployed here. And then we have the .SD card, where's that? Ah, so it's not called a .SD card. This is in a wic.xz format. So it's a compiled, sorry, not compiled, compressed, compressed disk image. This is essentially the same as .SD card format. You could DD this, if you're familiar with DD, it's the, the command for flashing um, binaries to disk directly. Uh, we can DD this binary here after uncompressing it directly to an SD card and then use it to boot our development kit. Hi everyone, greetings from Bainbridge Island and thanks for joining us for video number three. We will see you tomorrow for the next video and don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any future video content. See you at the next one. Thank you.